Hey, everybody, welcome again to 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers. There's something so magnetic about what's going on because people are, I tried to get people to have conversations with me over the course of a, a year or so online. Nobody really responded, but as soon as I put up this idea of 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers, people came out of the woodwork and I'm having like seven or eight calls a day with people and it is so beautiful because people are starting out as strangers and are really becoming friends. And it makes me wonder, like, what would happen if we as people in this world would just take a few minutes to sit and have conversations with people we don't know? Would it be possible that the tensions and the chaos and all the things the media is telling us about who we are and who we are and who we hate and who we love might just dissipate and we might just say, let's create a world that is our world where we the people come together and just enjoy ourselves together. Because so far, that's how these conversations have gone. No pressure on you, Mary because who knows where we're going to go, but I have, I have a, a really good feeling. So I really want to just take a moment and just say hello to Mary. Welcome her into the 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers. How are you doing, Mary? Thank you. I'm doing great. Okay. Um, I think the first thing I want to do is, you know, we say, how are you so often? And People do what you do. I do the same thing. Oh, I'm great. Good. How you? And, and yet when we take a moment to really pause and say, no, hold on a minute. I really want to know, how are you? Um, I, I would like to ask you again, how are you? Because we're in the midst of a coronavirus. We're in the midst of a changing world with race at the front, forefront. What was a big issue we, a, a year or so ago, the Me Too movement is almost you know, it's not taken third place now, but it's it's almost like a forgotten thing. And yet we have issues around the way women are treated, the way people of color are treated, the way people of, of with illness are treated. And, and how are you really doing in this in this moment of time? Honestly, I really am doing great. Um, when this I actually saw your um, conversation with Michael Sandler on Inspire Nation like four months ago, and this was before all of this hit. Yes. And I was really drawn to it. And I loved it so much that I watched it several times. And then I bought your beautiful book. Thank you so much. <laughs> and read it. And <laughs> I've already had a couple of friends buy it. Uh, one of my friends uh, got it on Friday, this past Friday, and read it on Saturday and said it was absolutely transforming. And she was still absorbing it and just really loved it. Um, but back to your question, so yeah, when, when the pandemic hit, I was uh, working in retail, and it wasn't my dream job, it was just something, you know, to pay the bills, and then this pandemic hit, and it was a shock to everyone, it was very strange, um, you know, I saw all the fear and the panic, and, you know, just out there and I realized, well, I'm here and I'm stuck here, you know, for the moment. And what I have control over is what's inside of me. So yeah. I really took, really took this time to really go inward even deeper. And I really have become more happy and more joyful and more at peace since this whole thing happened wow. um and it's not where my it's not where my journey started but i just feel like it just is finally blooming like a flower you know i i was in deep darkness for a long time so i'm not afraid to say my age i'm 51 years old and for 47 years of my life i was either sad depressed angry um Wow. It's just something, you know, I lived with, I didn't have any awareness at that time. And so I was kind of cracked open about five years ago. I was suicidal and it was about five years ago, this last month. And I had a bottle of pills in my left hand and I had my cell phone in my right hand. 
and you know everything i know people who can resonate with this know that the pain feels so great and you feel like you're in such darkness that you just want to you just want the lights to go out and so i was sitting there and i decided something made me nudged me whispered to me to call one of my brothers and he happens to be one of the funny guys in the family hmm. so i put the pills down and i called him <laughs> and i don't think he realized uh oh uh oh Are you there? I'm so sorry. I don't yes. Know what happened. Yeah, no, you dropped off. So, so you call, so you were at the place where you called your brother and yes. you don't think he realized. And then I lost you. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. This is real life, you know? I know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, there's not really much detail other than, you know, I'm still here. I reached out to some friends after that and they, you know, um, urged me to get some help and I did um, at the time I was also in a toxic relationship and um, I just was feeling very emotionally choked in that environment and so I decided to go to Florida for a few years um, been living in Chicago since like 91 but I went to uh, Florida for a few years and stayed with some family and that's where my healing journey really began. And I went through like a dark night. I'm holding my phone with my hand. Okay. Um, I went through, <laughs> I don't have fancy tripods and all that equipment uh, right now. All but, right. <laughs> um, so I went through a dark night of the soul. I um, did a lot of crying. I did a lot of reflecting. I did a lot of meditating. And so that's kind of where my journey began. And, you know, through that journey, I started to realize what really lives inside of me and in my heart and that yeah. I have this higher self within me. And uh, so, yeah, it was cracked open and then the healing journey began. Wow. Wow. So thank you for taking the time to just go through that. and and. You know, when you ask somebody how they are and they say they're great, and then they are great now. Mm -hmm. But when you take a moment and, and like when Mary just painted the, scenario, the, the scenery around why she's great now and what's happened to bring her to this place of greatness, in a moment you see a totally different picture of a person and you see a heroic journey of someone who has who has looked into themselves, seen the seen the demon, and walk and walk past it. And I just want to salute you so much for for the journey that you've been on, and continue to be on because those things are really real. Yeah. To anyone who's listening now, who knows exactly what you were talking about. What would you say to them? Um, you mean it from the dark place? Yeah. I would just tell them to just hang on, just take another breath, and then take another breath, and another one, and then take a step if you can, and take another step. Um, if you can, Pick up the phone and reach out, you know, call someone because there is someone out there that cares. You are not alone. And I'm feeling a little emotional right now because I have a friend that is in this dark place right now. And I am, I am contacting her. I said, do you want me to contact you every day right now? Because I just, I, I told her what I just said, you know, just step by step. You know, I'm here for you. Do you want me to contact you every day? Yes. So that's what I'm doing. I just want her to know that she's not alone. And I want everyone out there who's going through this to know that you're not alone. And I'm living proof that, like I said, I was miserable. I mean, most of the time I did smile and have fun throughout the last 51 years of my life. But, 
you know, a lot of it, you know, was dark. Um, but, you know, there is that light. And it's not at the end of the tunnel. It's right here. Wow. It really is. I, um, I love that reframe. Because everyone says it's out there somewhere at the end of the tunnel. And I love that you just said mm -hmm. with certain with certainty, it's not out there, it's in here. Mm -hmm. And so what was the thing that made, what was that pivot point that shifted you from the darkness to, to somehow seeing that glimmer of light that was inside you? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there was any single moment. I just knew that the relationship I was in, the state of being I was in, the darkness I was in was not it. And so me leaving the situation and going off to heal, like I said, I, I, I only expected to be in Florida for a year and I was there for almost three. Wow. Um, and that's sometimes, sometimes how life, you know, works. Um, yeah. there's no time frame. you know, everything happens in the right timing and I needed a lot more healing than I thought. And a lot, you know, a lot of other people thought, you know, yeah. um, there should be no timeline on it, but I really learned through the process. First of all, how to process my feelings because, you know, growing up you hear, oh, don't be sad, you know, or you're angry and yeah. people think, oh, that's so ugly. Don't be angry. And to me, anger is a step up from sadness because you actually have, you know, a movement of energy, Yes. you know, and it's not to hide from the sadness, but it's just to get that energy moving. And I don't mean anger in a violent way. Um, I just mean, it's okay to feel your emotions yeah. and to sit with them. And it's, and it's nice if there are other people there to, you know, hear you and see you and walk you through it. But you can also do that on your own when people are not available. Yeah. Um, and just to learn to be there for yourself. So that really changed my life. Do you see yourself doing that work with people, the helping people through those moments? I don't know if it's a calling, but at this point in my life, I'm open, you know, I, I yeah. say, I say pretty much every day now, I, I say to divine spirit, I say, thank you for leading the way. You know, I don't yeah. ask, I say, thank you for, I, even this morning, I kind of got this little idea in my head. I was like, okay, divine spirit, what are you up to now? You know, yeah. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you just never know. Like, I just, I want to be open. So, Fabulous. um, yeah, I'm not sure, but I definitely am focusing and have fully embraced my talent and gift for, for art. I absolutely love to work with my hands. I used to cut hair a long time ago. Um, I, I enjoy cooking. And then this kind of came about, it was a hidden talent that I didn't know I had. And it also came out of a dark time. Um, like about 10 years ago, I was dealing with chronic head pain. I either had a headache or a migraine every single day for like 14 months. Ouch. And at the end of that, I was so physically and emotionally drained that my mind just went, oh, I want to focus on something else. And so I pulled out of the closet this mosaic kit that my mother had sent me years before that I never, you know, played with. And I pulled it out of the closet and I just started creating. And the first mosaic I created looked like, you know, an amateur. Um, I created a couple more. I did like a burger and fries mosaic, which was kind of fun. Um, and then when I got to my fourth mosaic, something just clicked and I just started putting all the pieces together, like closer than before and more precise with more detail. And I was like, wow, where did that come from? You yeah. know? And so I've been on and off for the last 10 years or so um, creating mosaics. And like I said, just recently within this quarantine, um, 
and going through, you know, this journey, this inward journey, I just, cause I was kind of looking at other people's works of art and jewelry and things that they made. And I was like, oh, that's really beautiful. I would love to learn how to do that. And, oh, that's really nice and beautiful. I want to learn how to do this. And then a few weeks ago, I was like, wait a minute. I have this beautiful gift that I was given. Why am I looking out there? I already have what, you know, I'm looking right. for. It's right here. Right. Wow. So a couple of weeks ago, I lost my retail job. And that to me was like the path opening up for me. And yes. I've been just fully immersed in creating mosaics, creating my own schedule um, reinventing my, well, not re really reinventing myself, but I'm going to be creating a new website, um, new social media accounts that'll come in time. But right yeah. now I'm, I'm focusing on, uh, creating beautiful art and it usually shows up to me in inspiration from nature. That's why I feel connected with you because well, we're all connected, right? <laughs> yeah. And because I feel like what you say in your book and the way I create my art, it kind of reflects each other. Um, and Talk my more about that. Us. Talk more about that. I want to hear more about that. Yeah. So I feel like my art tells a story and um, well, first I want to tell this quick story about connection. Okay. Um, when I was in Florida and I was, meditating i mean i started meditating like 10 minutes a day then i went to 20 then i went to 30 and then i went to an hour i never thought i would do an hour wow and it started to feel so amazing that i i had the time so i was meditating for an hour a day and there was this one point where other people were talking about meditating for two hours and i was like oh my goodness that's a long time but I set an intention and I meditated for two hours one night. And so I sat there and within 30 minutes of the meditation, let me just say this real quick too. My father passed away 20 years ago wow. and I would, I would sometimes feel his presence like in the room with me. Um, but this was different. So I was meditating, wasn't thinking about him. I was just had my hand on my heart. I was just in a beautiful place. I was happy and peaceful, enjoying, you know, the peace. And out of nowhere, my I felt one, oneness with my father. Wow. Like I was him and he was me. Mm -hmm. And I know those are things that you usually hear when people have a near death experience, they feel that. Well, like I said, I was in this, this two hour meditation, a half hour in, and it only lasted about five seconds. But within the first second, I heard him speak to my heart and he said, will you forgive me? And wow. I, without hesitation, I said, yes, 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 like three times. And I burst into tears and it was just a very healing and amazing wonderful experience i just you know it, it's wow. hard to explain but wow. um no, you it, did it was a great job amazing. you did a great job and, and i really want to highlight some of the things that you're saying for people that are listening um and i really want people that listen to listen and pause and really listen to what's going on because mary's speaking about some things that are not easy to speak about and she is speaking from such an open, beautiful, vulnerable space, which we don't know each other. We, we, she joined a Facebook group that I have called the Mosaic Community, probably thinking it was Mosaic Makers. And we really have very little to do about Mosaic Makers, but um, she was just so kind to me in, in words that she said about the mosaic i said i would just love to have a, a conversation and then we did this and we thought why not do this conversations here because we don't really know each other but for those of you who are going through darkness and there's so many people now that are with the situation that's going on in the world today 
listen carefully to what Mary said. She's been there and she's come through. For those of you who have lost somebody in your life, listen to what Mary said through the, through the process of what she felt in meditation, that she had felt her dad before, but not in the way she felt him here. That in a five second period of time when she was just listening, to the world around her and to her own self, what came in was a voice from of her dad from 10 years ago. Um, but current, not a 10 year old voice, a current voice that asked for her forgiveness. And one of the things the mosaic is all about is about this idea of what would happen if we would really learn to listen, not to what we think we hear, but to what we, what is actually being said to us. Would it be possible to have a relationship with parents that have passed on? Would it be possible that our businesses could talk to us? Would it be possible that it could, we could ask our situation that's, that's literally holding us and suffocating us in pain and suffering what it wants to tell us? And would it be possible for that situation to communicate with us and for us to be able to hear what it's saying and not have to go through all the pain and suffering because we actually heard it? So there's so much in this first 20 minutes of our conversation that Mary said, I, I really want you to, one, listen to it more, and we're going to have links to get in touch with her. I want anybody who feels drawn to get in touch with her because she's in a transition place. And I, I sort of heard that she has a lot to offer people and that not only through her art, but through her being. Uh, think about it. Let's change the energy a little bit with, with just a lightning round, if we can. Okay. Uh, just sure. a few, just a few questions and then we'll come back again. Are you a dog person or sure. a cat person? I don't know if you're going to like my answers, but I like both. <laughs> okay. That's good. Which one, if you had to pick one, would you pick? A dog. Okay. Are you coffee or tea? Both, but coffee first. <laughs> okay, I love when people when people don't don't hold the or in the sentence because everything can be an and, right? Do you feel that you're someone who is in the box or someone who's out of the box? Again, both. I mean, I I think the box is comfortable, but I like to also color outside the lines. So. I love that. Okay. <laughs> um, I have a feeling I see a trend developing and it might continue with this one. But <laughs> do you feel it's important for you to, be, to find a place where you can speak your truth and be heard? Or do you feel it's more important for you to listen so that other people have that opportunity to speak their truth and be heard? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. I think... Um... You know, it, it does, it, it's a beautiful thing when someone can sit and really listen to you yeah. because, you know, that's why, I mean, I think what you're doing is a beautiful thing because so many people want to be heard. And you said you didn't know this was going to light up the way it did, but a lot of people want to be heard. And, you know, I just want to share my story, but most of all, I really just wanted to connect with you first because I, like I said, I felt that connection. And I knew when I joined the Mosaic community that it had nothing, it really wasn't about the art. It okay. had to do with, it had to do with connection. Um, I, I just felt that synchronicity, you know, and, and connection. So I'm happy to be in, in the community. Well, it's my honor to connect with you and thank you for reaching out and, and coming forward. So that's great couple more. Do you feel like you fit into the world or have you always felt different? Well, I, I used to feel I didn't fit in, but now I feel I do. Okay. I, right. I have a place in this world like everyone else does. What changed? My heart opened. I, I, I uncovered those layers of pain that were you know, had my heart closed. Again, a beautiful, beautiful answer because it wasn't something outside the change that made her fit in. 
There was something inside that changed that allowed her to fit in. So I love that. Are you someone who lives in your head more or in your heart more? Now my heart. Okay. And would you say you're a leader or a follower? Before I would say a follower, but now I feel like, I don't know if it's a leader is the right word, but I would, I would love to inspire others. I mean, that would be, you know, nice. Love it. Do you think people in general are more different or more similar to each other? I think we're more similar than, you know, we may think or some may think. Yes. Because, you know, this hair, this face, this body is just, uh, just clothing. You know, it's not who we really are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always intrigued by how something so superfluous to who we are has caused so much tension in the world because every one of us, if we have kids and our kids get hurt, are going to feel pain. Every one of us wants to be loved and accepted and listened to and heard and acknowledged and validated. And yet we somehow look at the differences. Like one of the things I love about Mosaic, and it's, I, don't, I don't make them, but I love that you do, is that it's very rare that pieces are flushed up against side to side. Sometimes they just connect corner to corner. Mm -hmm. And it's, if you would think about a corner to corner connection, you would think there's most of those pieces, most of what this piece believes and this piece believes have no relevance. But it's that connection of just that little bit of where they can connect makes the mosaic whole. Yeah. And I wonder why, if it's so easy in art to do that, to see that, to see the beauty of the mosaic is in the things that connect the pieces together. Why is it so difficult in life to, to live that way too? Why must we be the same as other people? Or why must people, because of the color we are, or the nationality we are, or the religion we practice, or the border we live behind, why would that separate us when we have so much more in common than we have apart? Right. Last question. Do you feel like you have a purpose in the world? I think that we all have a purpose by just being here and there's purpose in every moment. Do you know what your purpose is? Um, I don't know if it's one purpose. I think, um, I think my life is still unfolding and I'm excited to see where the path leads me next. I love that. And I think it's such an honest, truthful answer because I'm 65 years old and I would say most of my life I felt like I've lived a very purposeful life, but I didn't even find my purpose until I wrote the mosaic and the mosaic wrote itself through me. I mean, I really rediscovered now and knew what the what I was really brought here to do, which is help connect the disconnected world. So I, and yet I thought all this time I was living a very purposeful life, which I was for that mm -hmm. moment, but purpose can change and it can grow. Right. right. Um, what would you like to do if you could do anything? Well, one of the things I want to do is travel around the world um, because nature just opens my heart like nothing else opens my heart. It just, you know, because divine spirit is everywhere and nature, nature just is. It doesn't question itself. It's, you know, a tree doesn't stand there and say, why am I just standing here? It stands there in its magnificence and just is, you know, and it has yeah. a beautiful high vibration. A flower doesn't ask itself why it's beautiful. It just is beautiful. So I, I want to be out there and, you know, connect with nature more. So I, I would love to travel and just go hiking in the mountains and sit on a beach and, and enjoy those, you know, that high frequency of nature that just makes me feel instant peace and love every single time. I love that. I had a conversation with someone who is um, 
because flying is so hard to do now, he, he, he took his family on an RV trip to see his daughter who was across the country at college. And they went on an RV trip and they, they do RV trips every, they've done nine or 10 of them, but this one was unique. And I said to him, um, what is it you like about doing an RV? And he said, well, let me just tell you today we were at the Grand Canyon mm. and the Grand Canyon couldn't care less about the race related race protests that are going on or COVID-19. It just is here yep. and it hasn't changed. It doesn't change. It's just here. It's not affected by the things that are happening in the world around us. And he, he said, I like being in nature for that reason. So interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, what makes you happy? What makes me happy is creating and being out in nature. I mean, just really simple. And connecting with other people. I mean, just a few weeks ago, and I've been feeling a little lonely because I live by myself and haven't seen a lot of friends. And just a few weeks ago, um, I started this practice where every single day I will say thank you for things that I already have, but also thank you for things that I would love to have. And I said to spirit, to divine spirit, thank you for connecting me with new beautiful souls. And, and to create new beautiful friendships. And hello, out of the blue, now I'm having a conversation with you, you yeah, know, I which I it. absolutely love. And Me too, by the way. Yeah. So I just got into that habit of saying thank you um, and I love and appreciate and fill in the blank. So when I go out for a walk in the park, I'll say, you know, to the flower I pass, I love and appreciate you. I'll say to the blue sky, I love and appreciate you. I'll look in the mirror every day and say, I love and appreciate you. And if, if I, if you would have told me to do that 10 years ago, I would have been like, no, right, you know, it right. felt weird. And, you know, but I, I recommend for everyone to do that. <laughs> I love that. I love and appreciate that. I love and appreciate that you said that. Um, do you feel that not only people have something to say to us, but the world in general has something to say to us? In other words, do you feel the environment is trying to tell us something? Do you feel the, the nature is trying to tell us something? Do you feel the things that we would call inanimate objects? Do you feel that the, everything in the world is speaking to us sort of like mosaic like is what I, I discovered is everything through the mosaic is, is really has a message to tell us. And if we listen, we can hear it. But do you, do you feel that as well? Definitely. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll sit and I'll have a, a, a tree say something to me. It's not like, oh, I'll hear a voice as you, you understand, but yeah. you just, you just hear it and feel it in, in your heart. You know? Um, I mean, I, I was walking the other day and sometimes it just wants you to see its beauty. It just wants to share its beauty with you. I mean, I was in the park walking last week and, you know, your mind always wants to chatter and I catch myself and I hear a little nudge and a whisper to be in the present moment. And it's just spirit just nudging me to be present. And as soon as I did that this one day, this beautiful bright orange butterfly circled me a few times as I was walking and just fluttered around and flew away. And then a half a mile, it shows up again, or maybe it was another one. Um, and then I started, I looked at the trees and I saw a tree with its arms standing up, like it was, you know, reaching for higher. It's just little messages like that. If, if we pay attention and stay in the present moment, there's beauty right there instead of getting stuck in the past and caught up with how, how, how is the future going to work out? Just be present right now because there's beauty and messages right in front of us. I love it. What, if anything, do you think the world is trying to say to us as a, as a people now? To slow down, to take a breath and Take a breath with yourself and take a breath with one another. Listen, you know, like you're doing. I, I cried the other day thinking about what you're doing because, 
you know, I, I felt like, wow, you know, Danny's doing this, this, well, this virtual tour right now, but you are, you are, you are creating a soul mosaic, a mosaic of souls by talking yes. to all these different people, you know, so it may not be a work of art you hang on the wall, but it's this mosaic of souls. And it just, you know, made me tear up thinking about it. I love how connected we are and, and we're, we're virtual strangers, right? We, we, this is the first conversation we've had, but I love that you would know that because that's exactly the way I describe it to myself, that we are, we are pieces that have all become fragmented. And if we can come together just in any way, shape or form and just listen to each other and be with each other. And so I really want to encourage those of you who are listening, who maybe feel a little alone, it doesn't take anything. There's no greatness in me that allows me to open myself up to say to people, how are you? And ask a few questions and just listen. Why can't we all start having conversations with strangers? And even the people we know. <laughs> and even the people we know. I met... I've had a beautiful life and I've met some really, some of the richest people in the world. I've sat with them at their dining room tables, in their living rooms. I've met their parents, I've met their kids. And I've had an opportunity to sit and, and have them give me counsel and they've been kind enough to receive counsel from me as well. And it's been really, really beautiful. And I've had this glorious opportunity to sit on street corners with the poorest of the poor and do exactly the same thing. And one of the things that I realized is no matter how much money a person has, no matter what religion they practice, what color their skin, what border they live behind, or what they believe, every single person wants the same thing. They want to be loved and accepted. They want to be listened to and heard. And they want to be acknowledged for what they believe and validated for it. In my 65 years of being on this planet, no one has ever said to me, Danny, I want you to believe like me. Because when we ex love ex and accept the people and validate them and listen to them and understand them, it's not important that we agree with them. My, some of my best friends have the weirdest thoughts you could ever imagine. I would never do what they think what they think, but I love them for other reasons. I, I'm like that mosaic, the thing that connects us is something other than those pieces. Yeah. And so there's so much beauty in that. And I think that if we can get out of our shells, we're all lonely. If we can, I had a conversation with someone just before this one, and she said, well, it's so hard to do that because it's really hard to be like you are. And I said, well, it really isn't. Like, why is it so hard? Because if, if you want something from somebody, like if you want something in your life, she said, well, you, you seem pretty centered in yourself, but for those of us who aren't centered, it's hard to give something we don't have. I said, but that's, I, I believe exactly the opposite, that the things we want, are the things we give. If we were to give what we want, we would see it coming back to us because mm -hmm. we're probably not the only ones that want us, want it. So I would yeah. like to use this as an invitation to those of you who are listening to do something, to find five people, three people, one person, find a stranger and just say to them, how are you doing? Find someone that you know and that you haven't talked to in a while. How are you doing? And just give them the space to have that conversation. Definitely. Is there something you feel from your experience, from your life that you've always wanted to share with people and maybe haven't had an opportunity or you have had an opportunity, but here's a platform for you to say it again. What is it? You I apologize like? because you broke up a little bit. Okay. Let's try again. Is there in your life experience, is there something that you have that you wish you would have said or it, do you have that you that you hope you could say to people and maybe you've never said or maybe you've said it before but here would be another opportunity to share it with a world at large that's just listening to you now with no hesitation with no fighting with no with no slashback what is it you would like to say to the world if you had the chance to say something to help to help move it through this time that we're in right now? 
Well, I would like to actually read something that, well, I didn't actually write it. Um, sometimes I journal, but sometimes when I journal, it's not my words. It's kind of automatic writing or spirit writing. Fabulous. I'm not thinking about the words, they just come. And so I had something come through for me a couple of weeks ago, but I don't feel like it's just for me. I feel like it's for, you know, everyone or whoever wants to receive it. So I'll share it and read it. I'd love that. And some of them are, some, some of the words are just like one words, but th this is what came through on uh, June 24th. Step into the brilliance of who you are. You are made from magnificence and pure love. Go forward unafraid. You have everything you need. I am always here or there. I am never gone. Just call to me. Your attention to my presence allows me to be present. It is the same with your other thoughts. Dream, imagine, feel it. Breathe it all in, it is yours. You make it real. You allow it. Believe. Anytime a doubt shows up, go within and be still. I am always there. Presence. Present. I am making you new. Transformation. The foundation is being set. Strong. Trust. You feel it because it is so. I carry you. Now open your wings, dear. Soar. Just open them. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for sharing that. Couldn't be more appropriate and yes. relevant for this time. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm happy to share it. How do people, how would people get in touch with you now? And I know things are in flux, but how would they get in touch with you now? Because this is going to go up in the next day or two. So how would people get in touch with you? Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I welcome people to email me. They can email me um, right now. They can use Mary Josephine Mosaics at gmail.com. Um, if you want to see some of my art, I haven't posted on there in a year, and there's another story behind that, but um, I'm going to be changing that. But they can look up MJ Mosaics on Instagram, and you can see some of the art I have created. You could message me there if you'd like or email me at MaryJosephineMosaics at gmail.com. And you'll send me those links so I can put them in the show notes. And those pieces are allegedly for sale if people want to buy them? Um, I only actually have two things for sale right now. One is a, a Tree of All Seasons mosaic. I'm not sure if it's posted right now, but I'll, I'll post it. Um, and I have a sun, a little sun moon bracelet that's really pretty, but I'm going to be creating like I said, for the next several months, um, Fabulous. I am de dedicated and devoted to it. Fabulous. So look in the show notes. You'll all the information of how to get in touch with Mary will be there. Mary, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being the beautiful being that you are for all the support that you've given to me in my journey and through um, introducing my book, The Mosaic, to, uh, to friends of yours and I want to thank Absolutely. you so much for, for the kind place you show up in my life. And I'm so happy to have this opportunity to get to know you a little. And I hope that our conversations will only continue. Okay. Oh, definitely. I have, I have more to share with you. So definitely. I can't, I can't wait. All right. For those of you who are listening, thank you again for sharing in this moment. And again, you know, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but can you see how easy conversation happens when we just put ourselves out there and invite somebody to have a conversation with us? These conversations, just go, for I, it. just go for it. As Mary said, just open up and invite somebody to do it. The thing we want, if we're lonely, reach out to other people and, and say, let's just have a conversation. Who knows what will happen? But mm -hmm. what I'm finding more and more is that people that I never knew, people that I've never talked to, I just feel such an affinity to them when I have a short conversation. And why not? We are so much more connected than we know. Absolutely. Mary, Mary thank you for being another example to me, another piece in my beautiful mosaic. 
And thank, thank you, you for taking your time. Those of you who listen, thank you for taking your time. We'll keep posting these. We'll keep showing them and just, just listen. And, and as Mary beautifully said, become a part of this soul mosaic that is of all yeah. of us together. I love that. I'm listening to them as I'm cutting glass. I'm listening to your conversation. So uh, I'm, I'm catching that. up. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so, so much. What a sweet thing. Okay, until next time, everybody, God bless and thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you.